Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about two dividend growth stocks that I just bought and added to my portfolio here today. Um, both of these companies uh, were already in my portfolio, already pretty big positions, um, and they both reported earnings yesterday with a very similar theme, which we'll go over today. In this video, I really want to talk about each company, um, their current valuation, do a quick business review and just focus on their history of increasing the dividend, returning capital to shareholders, and why I like these stocks over the long term. Now, before getting into this video, I just want to call out that I'm not a financial advisor. Um, please do your own research before um, purchasing any securities. Uh, and in addition to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you have any thoughts on either of these stocks, let me know in the comments. would love to interact with you guys down there. So let's get into this video. The first stock uh, that I bought here today that's a dividend growth company is Microsoft. So Microsoft reported their earnings yesterday, had a pretty strong quarter that they reported, but they disappointed investors on the outlook, uh, which is why at the open today, the stock got hit pretty hard. Um, down, I think it was about 4%. And I actually, come to think of it, got, got lucky getting the stock for about 234 bucks. Uh, went up 6 $7 from there throughout the day. Um, so I was lucky to be paying attention at the open. And when I saw it drop that much, I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to add to the portfolio. Um, in terms of why I like this stock, this stock here has a lot of areas of their business uh, that are positioned for great long-term growth. Their first business here, productivity and business processes. Think Office 365, so recurring revenue model on um, like PowerPoint, Word, Excel, uh, with lots of big companies, small companies, individual consumers. Uh, and they continue to kind of take pricing on that and, and exercise pricing power as well as build out new capabilities. So $17 billion in the quarter there, 7% growth, 13% growth on current uh, constant currency. Um, Intelligent Cloud, which is really driven by Azure, continues to be the biggest growth engine and cash cow for the company. Uh, and then lastly, uh, personal computing. So I believe in this division they have um, their gaming, Xbox, et cetera, but also everything hardware. So think uh, Windows licenses, uh, as well as computer, desktop, laptops, um, tablets, things of that uh, nature. Uh, and you can kind of see there's some weakness there, which really dragged down the overall performance of the quarter. Um, they, they commented on it just being a very high base period, the holidays from year ago. So we'll keep a close eye on this to see if, if that's true or we continue to see weakness throughout the year. Um, but that's... Um, really unconventional for Microsoft to show double digit year over year declines in any of their segments. What's interesting is um, while they had about a 10% um, EPS hurt, their revenue was actually up a few percent and their margins were also in, give or take in line with revenue, which means that they incurred lots of costs uh, on like CapEx and other expenses between gross margin and, and, and net income. Um, so worth noting, just probably some corporate charges, hopefully some one-time elements there that's suppressing overall net income margins. But overall, this company is in pretty healthy financial position from a economic standpoint. 67% gross margins is fantastic. 40% operating income margins is fantastic. And they return a lot of... Um, revenue down to the bottom line still. So overall, not, not concerned, but something I'll keep an eye on in terms of margins, as well as their personal computing division um, in terms of, of main things that impacted the, in, the income statement to the downside this quarter. Now, just talking about Microsoft as, as a very strong dividend company, this is their return to shareholders over the last 10 years. And just to walk you guys through this chart a bit, the, let's call it turquoise box, is the dividends that they have been paying out uh, on an absolute basis. So you can kind of see every year they're paying out more and more dividends. Um, the blue line is the dividends per share. 
So you can kind of see the gap between um, dividends per share accelerating at a faster pace. That's because the purple lines here are net share buybacks. Um, so you're seeing them increase the dividend on an app on a like pay out more money every year on an absolute basis, lower the share count every year, which means in addition to getting the raise of absolute payments on your dividend, you're also getting more of the money the company's paying out as you own more of the business. So a really good capital allocation model to return capital to shareholders through both buybacks and dividends per share. Now, from a buyback perspective, they're not crazy with their buyback. I believe about uh, 15 years ago, they had 9 billion shares. Today, they have 7.5 billion. So you can kind of do the math on that. Um, they've bought back, uh, what, let's call it 13, 14% of the company over 10 years. So they're buying back 1% to 2% of the company a year. Um, and that's that's good. There's some companies that do more. Some comp Most companies do less, obviously. Um, but I'd say over a long period of time, um, that's a pretty healthy return to, to shareholders, especially since then they're turning around and also giving you um, a distribution increase on top of the increased ownership in the company. One thing as we look at capital allocation strategy with Microsoft, that's um, typically not my favorite strategy, uh, but with Microsoft, I give them a pass. Um, in addition to returning all of that share to sh uh, cash to shareholders through buybacks, through dividends, um, they've also taken significant amounts from their income to buy other businesses and, and expand their business. Uh, just going back, they bought Skype for $8 billion. They just recently announced a $10 billion investment in ChatGBT to increase their ownership in that business up to 49%. They bought LinkedIn in 2016 for $26 billion, which was a crazy price back then, but it's really been a good growth driver for, for that segment um, and, and probably more justifies that price now. And then last year announced that they are working to acquire Activision for $70 billion. So just here, then there was a lot more, I think, GitHub ones like that. But this is um, over $110 billion in acquisitions that have have or will uh, at some point fuel uh, growth in terms of profits of the business uh, through the net income that these new businesses are um, are bringing to the table. So, in addition to the share buybacks, the uh, increased dividends, they are also giving you a share of all these new businesses that they're investing their profits into acquiring and, and taking over. So typically I, I prefer just let me decide as an investor where I want to allocate my capital, give it back to me in dividends or share buybacks. Um, either way, either I get more of a company I already own or I get capital to buy another stock or, or do what I want with it. But Microsoft is one of those companies that since they're doing capital um, distribution increases and share buybacks, and they tend to invest in things that I think are good investments on the M&A side, I kind of give them a free pass. One thing to, to note, and sorry, flipping around on the slides here a bit, in terms of valuation, the company's trading at $240. They should do give or take $9 to $10 of EPS this year. So the company's trading 24, 25 times 2023 earnings. So noted, not cheap, uh, but this company tends to trade um, more expensive than that in normal times. I know interest rates have, have been going up and, and their business has been softening in terms of revenue growth. Um, but I think this is a good opportunity to nibble in and, and add to my position here. Um, a company that's uh, trading 25X, has a lot of secular growth ahead of it, has a really strong history of increasing distributions and capital allocation to investors. And on top of that, has a lot of strategic acquisitions uh, in, in the pipeline. So that's why I like Microsoft. That's why I bought it on weakness today. And if the company went down further, um, I'd consider uh, nibbling on it a bit more. The 1% starting yield is probably stopping me from jumping in in a huge way and making this like a, a top three, top four position or something like that. But I do own a healthy amount of Microsoft and it'll probably stay kind of like a, a mid-tier position for me. 
Last thing I just want to comment uh, in terms of um, EPS for next year and ongoing, I believe Activision makes um, three, four billion dollars a year in net income, especially if they derive synergies from this acquisition. So this should provide another, you know, let's call it 40, 50 cents of earnings per share um, for uh, Microsoft. I think they're primarily buying this thing in cash because uh, they have such a good balance sheet. So this will be super accretive to EPS, should grow EPS by about 5%. So as soon as this closes and they finish rolling it into the business, while minor, um, it should lower the multiple from like a 24 to a 25 to a 23 to a 24. So some tailwind on uh, multiple, but overall, I don't think it's, it's moving the needle or it's necessarily the reason I'm investing in the bigger picture. Just something that is another driver in the right direction of, of creating shareholder value in addition to everything they currently have going that we talked. Going into the second stock I added here today. Um, so I added this in one of my registered accounts. I bought 10 shares of Canadian National Railway, CNR on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Um, in the US, it trades under CNI. Um, so if you're a US investor, this company does get a lot of their revenue from the US, um, but also obviously a good chunk in Canada. So if you're looking for a dividend growth company um, that has a high moat, has some US exposure, but also um, Canadian exposure um, and trades on a US exchange, maybe you could consider taking a look at, at CNR and, and doing more research on it. But I love this company. Um, it's my number one holding in my portfolio. If, if you watch my portfolio reveal videos, if not, I recommend you go back and watch those if you want to learn more. I, I picked up more slides in that one. Um, but very similar story on CNR as Microsoft. They had a killer 2022. Um, some background on their 2022. In January 2022, they increased their dividend by 20% off of a really good 21 and forecasted an absolutely blockbuster 2022 and they hit the optimistic forecast. So you can kind of see some of these numbers here, even on a strong 21, uh, increased adjusted EPS by 23%, um, which is fantastic growth uh, for the type of business that this is. In addition to um, their EPS growth, um, they've been buying back a lot of shares, continuing to increase the dividend. I, I mentioned the 22 per, the 20% in 2022. They increased it 8% again yesterday. Um, so this is a company that's firing on all cylinders and they're maintaining a very, very strong balance sheet that's putting them in a really good position to continue to invest in the business and return capital to shareholders. Now, why was the stock down? Um, I bought the stock here, it looks like, like 157 and change closed at 158. So about the same. Um, the stock was down pretty big, about 5% based off of um, a poor outlook for 2023. So you'll see that here, they're, they're pretty much forecasting low single digit earnings per share growth, where this company um, was just rolling out of bed and growing high single digits over the last 10, 20 years. And in the last few years, they've accelerated that growth rate into um, the teens and even this last year into the 20s. So I think this disappointed investors a bit. I don't think they were expecting another 20% growth year, but I think maybe they were expecting mid to high single digits. We'll kind of go into that a bit and why I'm still bullish on the stock for at least the long term. So what be was behind some of their assumptions here? As they look at their forecast for 23, they're pretty look much looking at... Um, merchandise materials, so forest products, lumber, metals, chemicals, to all be down versus 2022. Um, also looking at consumer products, international intermodal, domestic intermodal, um, to be down, automotive to be flat. So just to, to read through the railway terms here, they're essentially forecasting a recession for 2023, and that's what they have in their well, uh, Bay Street, Wall Street um, forecast that's leading to the single digit growth. So some companies are coming out um, pretending like everything's fine and dandy. 
um, expecting things to do well this year and, and outlooking accordingly. CNR is a bit more conservative here, taking an, a conservative approach and kind of calling out some of the downside they think may fester throughout the year. Um, and that's what's leading to the lower outlook. Now, I tend to not overthink what kind of position companies frame their outlook in, especially a company with as much macroeconomic exposure um, in their growth rates as CNR. At the end of the day, if the economy does well um, or holds decently, CNR will grow on that and then they tend to price ahead of inflation. So they'll probably grow ahead of that. Um, so they're being pessimistic here. Um, if we do go into a recession and they still grow their EPS low single digits, I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think that's actually a great um, attribute that really strong long-term compounders have. They never have extremely bad down years. Um, being able to hold flat on your profit numbers during weak times and then accelerate 20 plus percent during good times is a really good formula to have very strong returns over over decades. So that's kind of the kind of company that, that CN Rail is. And even if this does actualize how they're forecasting relative to the broader market, I don't think that would be a terrible uh, thing in terms of company performance. Now going into uh, the 2023 outlook a little bit more, they call out here the 8% dividend uh, that they announced yesterday that I mentioned, 27th consecutive annual increase. Uh, for those of you who don't know, 27 years ago is when they um, went public. Before that, they were privatized, owned by the government of Canada, I believe. Um, so they've really been doing this for their entire existence in terms of uh, buying back shares, increasing the dividend year over year um, at a really healthy rate. In addition to the dividend increase of 8%, they're also looking to increase or re-up their share buyback plan by $4 billion. It's about 4% of the company. Um, and they tend to actually fill their repurchase programs pretty healthily. I think they, they bought more than three quarters of their one for 2022. So they're really good at buying back shares. Um, just a couple, I think in 2018, uh, they had like 760 million outstanding shares. At the end of 2022, they had 670 million. So they bought back 15% of the company in the last like five years, um, which is which is great. 32 million common shares. If they actually bought all that, they'd be returning um, about 4% of capital back to shareholders on top of a 2% dividend that's growing. So you're getting 6% today. Um, or this year in capital um, in capital return uh, or shareholder return just from the capital allocation strategy, not to mention the perpetual dividend increases into the future that this company uh, delivers. And just going from a investor presentation from last quarter, so you'll see they don't have the 27th consecutive raise since that's what's happened yesterday. But this is the number I want to call out. Since, um, or sorry, this is the 20% uh, number I was referring to. I thought it was 20, I guess it's 19. Um, but since 1996, where they first increased their dividend um, after going public, they have an annual growth rate of their dividend of 16%. Now, this isn't like one of those stocks like Berkshire who had like unbelievable performance uh 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and they're still leveraging those returns from then to kind of beef up their cumulative kagers. This is, this is really accurate in terms of depicting what the next five years, 10 years could look like for CN Rail. Just in the last three years, I think they increased the dividend um, 10%, uh, sorry, 10%, 19%, and 8%. So they're still increasing the dividend high single digits to double digits year over year, despite being at it for 27 years. Um, and they still have a good balance sheet, still have a relatively low payout ratio. And the thing with railroads is um, obviously there's investment opportunities, building out ports, trucking, other things, but it's really not huge opportunities to 
vastly expand their presence and, and go into new markets and stuff like that, uh, given just the nature of, of the business and the industry. So returning capital to shareholders is at the core of what these companies do with their excess capital, and that's not going to change uh, any time in the future. Anyways, that's the reason that I really love both of these companies. Super strong dividend um, payers, increasing the dividend year over year, buying back shares, really strong businesses. Um, and I think over the long term, despite having um, price to earnings uh, in the 20 to the 25 range between these two companies, I think if, if you have a long term investment horizon, your yield on cost 10 years from now is going to be significantly higher than most high yielding um, stocks that you can buy today. And you're going to have significantly less operational risk given the quality of these businesses and the secular trends that they're riding into the next decade. So that's my thoughts on Microsoft and CN Rail. If you guys have any thoughts on either of these companies, let me know in the comments. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.